Brooks Software Solution. Welcome to our demonstration of Sage 200 2015. First of all, what we have presented is our getting started screen here on the main page. And we've got a couple of links on the top. We've got our frequently accessed. And what happens here is Google's toolkit in the background records what we access on a certain day of the week. And when we come into the Wednesday, what it will do is prompt us that we usually use these um, entry methods to perform some tasks. So for instance, on Wednesday, it's expecting me to look at my sales summary, enter a customer receipt, and possibly look at the purchase summary, the financial summary, etc. It will store this so that there will be some intelligence around it. We've got the ability to um, create some favorites. So where we see a star on a program, we can click this and under our star here, it will start logging these programs. So we have quick access or shortcuts to certain entry programs. Down below here, you can see that we've got um, access to certain um, functions. They're the last ones that were accessed. And if we do have any um, windows open, so if I open up Encount Inquiry here and I leave it down, we don't have to find out in the background where it is. What we can do is we can see them logged here. We can pop into it through here. And then what we can do is we can close it if it's locking us out anywhere. What we've got also down on the <clears throat> left hand side are all of the programs that are under, first of all, we look at the financials module, which is the sales ledger, purchase ledger, nominal ledger, and cash book. And these are standard items that we would expect. And as we open out these menu structures here, you can see if any of them need extending. We can look and present our customer list in the background. What we have here is some intelligence that we highlight this item here. If we click onto a program on our top menu, it will self populate and we can go through amending a customer. If we highlight a number of them and go back into the same program, we can skip to these, this next customer in the, in the list that was highlighted without having to keep reselecting. You can also see down here on the um, right hand side that the items that we've selected, we can see quite quickly the um, totals on anywhere in a number column. If we, we can sort on our columns here, ascending and descending, if we need to move any columns across, we can do and we can sort this. This view is personal, so it's only for your user and it will be kept as that. If we right click, we can export what we see here to Excel. You will see here that what happens are items, if our view is shrunk in any, in any way, instead of having them off extended onto the right where we can't find them, they will intelligently cal collate all tasks that are relevant to each other. So for instance, additional transactions, <coughs> What it's done is it's grouped these together and you can see from the view it's grouped these together. One of the advantages of Sage 200 is the open period. So if we pop into the maintain accounting periods, you can see here that what we've got is three statuses. We've got closed, opened and future. There's 60 periods here currently being shown, so we must close any one of these four before we're able to close the nominal ledger off. We can change these dates if we've got permission and we've got the ability to have up to 20 periods. This can be very useful if a company is changing their year end. We can set the future years so we can see how these set up the expected date ranges. And also under the period control, what we can see is if anybody has been closing and when they did it and who did it. So this log is kept on your behalf. Once you highlight a period, you will notice that these items are no longer gray. So we can click in here and change the period. And once we click on OK, what this will do is it will run through the period end and it will close it off. And you will see the status in the background there has now changed to close. You can have as many periods opened as you wish to and it's based on this setting here. So for instance, we have all 12 that we're allowed to have open at one time. 
But what also we can do is complementary to that parameter is we can say that we want to have transaction date validation. We can use it by using a number of days post and pre these closed or what we can do is we can say that previous financial years it's unacceptable to post into them. Acceptable meaning it will warn you that you're going to there and normal means it will allow you to put in the dates. You can then look at the future financial years and the closed um, accounting periods and set up these so that they stop users from accessing them. Once you're closed, you're closed. <clears throat> Another very strong area of the financials is around the currencies and exchange rates. So in here you set up any number of currencies you wish to with the exchange rates here and under the settings you set which one is the base. You can also maintain nominal codes for um, FX gains and losses in relation to these currencies here. And again you can see where the currency rates are being changed and maintained by somebody. Um, if we have a look here at the, um, possibly the Euro. So another strong area is the currencies and exchange rates. So if we pop in here, you can see, you can have any number of currencies listed in here and you can have the exchange rate to them. You can also maintain period exchange rates. So if you want to have a quarterly exchange rate, you can also maintain them here. You set which one is the base currency and you can have for your FX gains and loss posting, you can have a specific nominal per currency. Another area that can be used very strongly in customers and suppliers is the roles. So this is where you can keep contact information per a role and depending on which module you want to use. So if we have a look and set them as mandatory. So if we have a look here under the account and click the maintain and we have a look under contacts, you can see here, here are our roles. So all this information here can be maintained per role. So instead of people adding um, their own contact details and another person coming in and overriding them to what suits them, you can have multiples of this. These contact roles are also used for emailing of statements, invoices and remittance advices. Um, in relation to the currency um, gains and losses, if we have a look here just to show that in one, um, in one move, what we can do is if we clear this list here and we click on receipt. So we have our cash book um, selected here, which is a sterling cash book. And if we select a Euro customer, you can see instantly here, we've got a choice of currency that we want to make the payment um, for. We put our various references up here <coughs> and you can see the rate. And depending on our permissions as a user, whether we're allowed to change that exchange rate or not. But also in the one transaction, we can also set our bank charges here. So everything can be performed in a single click. We'll also look here at our nominal list. So we can see here, starting at the um, low numbers, we've got our balance sheet items that are listed here. And now we look into the start of our PL items. In here, what we can do is we can have the same account number running through our chart of accounts, but we can break these out over cost center and departments. So in fact, these are a single entity of a nominal account, but what we can do is we can group the information. So if we have a look at the summary breakdown and we select our 3000 range, we can see here balances on the 3000 range and we can see the breakdown here over the cost center. I can click into one cost center to drill through and the details will now change and reflect the cost center plus the nominal code here. It's a three tier nominal structure. In the nominal ledger we've also got the financial statements here so you can have any number of P&L and balance sheet layouts whichever the business wants and in here you design this structure yourself so you can have any format that you wish a number of times. So you can have it at detail level and at high level. 
Also what we can do with these formats is we can use them around the nominal ledger inquiries. So if we look at the view nominal structure, so if we've got a, a default p and in a balance sheet that's there, what that could do is allow us to inquire on our information. So what appears here as per our format, we can see the profit and loss here at the at the high level and what we can do is we can drill in and the drill in is all based on our format how we want to use it so we can see very quickly what a total sales are we can see very quickly what the total trading expenses are and if we want to we can go further into that to see where those figures are broken over if we look at a nominal transaction inquiry we can see here the list of all of the items that are posted um, from here and you can see that these are coming from the sales invoice of the customer and the invoice number that it was posted against. If we highlight any one of these, what pops up is the um, double entry of this and where the source of that entry came from. You can have a look and you can get back to the customer. The event. And if this was a receipt from a customer, you would see the bank account that was used there. Moving on to the purchase ledger. So one of the features in the purchase ledger are around the period end routines where we can do payment processing. So what the system can do is it can generate a list of all the suppliers that are due for payment in the period. And that can be also based on a grouping of the customers. So if we look at a supplier here, Underneath the payment, we have a, a payment group. So we can have any number of these. We can call them what we like. So we may have people, unlikely still got checks, but we've got direct debit, we've got e-banking, we've got credit card, etc. And once we've generated the, the payment processing, and we may need to amend and take off some suppliers and some invoices uh, on the suggested payment list, um, but once we have agreed what our list is and we move into the generate payments, you can see here we can pay by multiple suppliers. So what we can do here is select which group of suppliers we want to pay first. So you could maintain groups around a priority list. You have certain suppliers that um, if they're not paid will stop your business from functioning. So you can generate those first. The, depending on the bank that you're linked to, you can create a file and upload this file automatically to the bank and it will be SEPA compliant. As part of the payment also, if we go back into the supplier account and look under the contacts, if we see here that the, we spoke about roles before, if we see that the send remittance to is flagged, what we can do is automatically send a remittance advice into this email address here to complete the process in one step. Another very powerful area of Sage 200 2015 here is the summaries area. We've got um, four quick summary pieces of information around each area. So if we click on the sales summary, what we can see here is our turnover graphically. We can see very quickly this information. We can look at our outstanding debt across our um, business. We can see here our top customers. Another piece of information is the worst paying customers. So we can get our credit control team quickly onto these customers and start to try and fix that situation. If we look at the purchases information, similarly, we've got a turnover around our, uh, around our suppliers, um, our suppliers that are overdue and across, um, across the top ones, how many, how many in days, who our top suppliers are, and our supplier discounts that are available. On the financial side, we have our profit by period graphically. We've got our VAT year to date. We've got, very important, our debtors and creditors last 12 periods, and our budgets versus our actuals. Very powerful information at a click of a button. And finally, signing off here on the summaries is we've got sales order summary. So we can see here across the number of months and we can see here on the grid where our orders versus our returns are. So luckily our returns are very small and we can see our orders are very high, but we can see a bit of fluctuation around the, the periods, what happened in September versus August. 
the overview of the orders and the dispatches in the last um, 12 months that will be considered late and on time. The top selling items in the last 12 months and the sales by profit. Very powerful information at one click of a button.